you and respect the past judges who, who believe in the religion and believe that their only authority is through the use of violence and that anybody who asks the questions that I'm asking, you're going to take a call right now. Uh, I have to take time. over here. Go ahead. Hi, or Sailor. Oh, I, I, I would have called you if I were available to call you. I'm with a client. Okay, did you receive Did you receive the material I sent you? Okay, good. If there's nothing else, if anything else had occurred, I would have called you immediately. All right. No, you don't ask me now. I'm with a client. Thank you. I'll call you, like I said. The, re the reason I asked you to define what law is uh -huh. because I asked for factual evidence that the Oregon or the criminal code of Oregon applies. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be speaking of laws, then I assume that you're going to be speaking about the types of laws which are, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, unchangeable. No. Okay. They're, all, they're all changeable. They're all subject to amendment. Well, uh, again, there are laws which exist in this world which are unchangeable. You know, gravity? Well, possibly. I mean, that could be an example of one. Um, so when you're asking, when I'm asking about factual evidence, if you're going to cite law, then I assume that you are going to cite laws in fact and not opinion that you call laws. So you will. Okay, so factual evidence, please. Uh, you know, we, 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 we don't have any. No, I'm saying the question that the question you're asking does not permit a reasonable answer. It's not a reasonable question. What part of it don't you understand? What part is unreasonable? Which word? Which word is unreasonable? I'm not going to engage further in this. Uh, of course not. Of, of course not. Well, it, it is. It's. it's if you're playing games with definition, yeah, I'm not as well. I'm asking for factual evidence. Since I am being threatened with possible jail time and some other threat, which everyone refuses to clarify what it means, um, I need to know what factual evidence is there that this code applies. So is there any or is there not any? Well, you're, you're presuming that the state has to establish well, their ability. I'm not presuming anything. I'm asking you a question. What factual evidence is there that the criminal code of Oregon applies to me? It might mean the code itself. Wouldn't that be a circular argument? Well, the law applies because the law says it applies. To you. Well, yeah, that's, that is the case. The law applies because it says it applies. Okay, so if I write down on a piece of paper, blah, 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 Okay, this applies now because the law applies now. You only five thousand dollars. Thank you. Okay, why not? Because you did not have guns. No, no. Well, you could say it's guns, but it's not just guns. I mean, ask the Bundy. It isn't just guns. In other words, I don't know what those, 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 those yokels that tried to occupy the uh, uh, Mount Bird Refuge, so they're now in federal prison. <laughs> yokels? Did you say yokels? Yokels. The the the. the uh, the criminal code of Oregon is a product of the government of the state of Oregon, which, uh, which government uh, was instituted subject to the, uh, uh, <laughs> the act of the territorial legislature back in 1958, <laughs> uh, which, and it, it continues in force uh, as a result of the, uh, the general consent of the people of the state of Oregon. <laughs> Wait, wait, general consent? I didn't know you were a stand-up comedian. I'm sorry, that's hilarious. General consent, I'm sorry. It doesn't require specific consent of any one individual. It is a, it is a, uh, it is a generalized thing. Now, the simple fact of the matter is, if you want to place yourself in uh, uh, rebellion against the authority of the government... Who's doing that? Nobody's doing that. Nobody's doing that. you want... What did not see the, the government doesn't have to explain to you why it has the authority to impose this law. You might think it does, but it doesn't. Alright, so here I am again in editing part three. And I just find it crazy creepy that this lawyer who claims to be this talented, well known, well experienced criminal defense attorney who gets paid, uh, you know, Harvard educated, good sums of money, apparently, to help save people from the consequences of the government, including nonviolent victimless crimes. If you look online and Google his name, 
Lawrence Taylor, Oregon lawyer. You'll come across, you know, him being sanctioned uh, in a process that began in 2009 and ended in, like, November of 2010. And when you read the reason why he was sanctioned, this guy didn't just have an employee that made a mistake. He benefited from that employee's mistake and took advantage of it, and nobody knew it for a long time going forward until later when the defense attorney forced the court to dig on where he obtained certain information. And it came to light that he uh, came across it unlawfully, let's call it their word. Uh, he, he came across it unethically, is what happened. He broke their own rules. And he was sanctioned by judges, i.e. promoted lawyers, members of their own club, <laughs> in 2010 for that. So what it makes you wonder is, like, getting busted like that, it's kind of like a DUI, in that if you get caught doing it once, how many times were you doing it and you didn't get caught, right? I mean, it's a crooked, crooked system, but even within that crooked system, if you, if those who are crooked condemn you for being crooked, how many other times were you crooked and no one knows about it? This is kind of the beginning of the point I'm trying to make, which ends in the creepy fact of it being from Oregon, again, dealing with this guy and then talking about how the government doesn't have to explain anything when it comes down to it. And then earlier when he mentioned yokels, which, you know, I tend to call one of them a martyr who was just driven to the edge. Um... Yokels, who stood up to the government in Oregon. Um, you know, he's a lawyer in that state, quote-unquote, telling us that the government doesn't have to do certain things and won't do certain things. Even though, obviously, us bringing to light this certain same thing has caused all of these gears in their grinding machine to come to an halt over this one ordeal, quote-unquote, case, 10 months long now, over 8 months community service, plea offer. All right. The end. End rant. Continue with that recording. See, the, the government doesn't have to explain the UI as the authority to impose this law. You might think it does, but it doesn't. Logic and oh, ethics and dictate international that. opinion. The weight of public opinion. We'll just see about that going forward, if what the judges are pressured or not pressured to do. They do have to explain logic and ethics in a courtroom or suffer the consequences of public opinion and being embarrassed off the bench. If you doubt that, we've got a bunch of recordings coming up. You can see it yourself, sir. I think that's a delightful idea. I think that, I think that exposing these... Uh, these um, positions that you're taking uh, to, to to the public might be, I doubt it, but it might be enlightening to you. It's so not about what me. I want to know, it sounds like what you're saying is there is no factual evidence that the criminal code of Oregon applies. Okay, so is there factual evidence that the criminal code of Oregon applies, yes or no? There is, but you don't want to hear it. Okay, so you're saying, I will say that's a yes? I'm saying that 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 it that it that it, it is. Please just get a yes or no. No, 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 no because because that that's you you. I can see where you're going. Well, no, I'm asking you one question right now. Is there factual evidence that the criminal code of Oregon applies to me? Yes or no? Okay, okay. And let me try to answer the question. The question would be first. Question would be well, then what would cause what? what first question, no, it's not. First question is what would cause their factual evidence? What, the question is what would constitute factual evidence? By apply? And what, and what, Impose? What sort of a, what, what, okay, now, I mean, for example, um, factual evidence that this pen writes, I write with it, right? Factual evidence as to the, uh, to the, to the atomic structure or composition of this is less obvious. It might require some, some considerable research. Right. Uh, the, the question what you're saying, and what you're asking is, of course, as, as I'm sure you're well known, is the question of jurisdiction. Because uh, that means what kind of thing. Okay, I don't, first off, jurisdiction sounds like some foreign legalese word that is in your religion. Okay? I don't, I haven't generally... You use it, you use it a lot in court, in public. Because that is the only way I can communicate this idea of has the prosecutor submitted this factual evidence for you to hold a gun to my head and say, we are going to falsely imprison you and force you to come into this room right now. Otherwise, you will be going to jail. So I want to know, what is, I just want a yes or no. Is there, oh, you're not going to say yes or no. Is there factual evidence that criminal code of Oregon applies to me? He said yes, but we don't want to hear it. No, the application, the application of criminal code to you is not in itself 
in dispute. You say, well, yes, it is. What I'm, I'm asking is there factual evidence that that code applies to me, and I am that so obviously. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the factual evidence is your presence within the state of Oregon. Oh, yes. I don't know what you mean by that. You don't know that your presence in the state of Oregon? I, first off, I the, the state of Oregon appears to be the plaintiff. Okay, so right. I don't know how I can be within a plaintiff. No, no, no. You see, you're, you're confusing two different things. The state of Oregon means different things. It could mean the physical, it could mean the physical territory of the state of Oregon, or it could mean the government of the state of Oregon, right? And it, they are two distinct things. You can't interchange them as is convenient to your position. He is li the state of Oregon is listed as the plaintiff, sir. The plaintiff is the state of Oregon. You can't be like, oh, well, it can be this over here and this over here, whatever suits our wants. It's listed as the plaintiff. You can't be within something and that gives your rule book the authority to rule. That makes no sense whatsoever. And even you have to admit that. No, no, actually, no, I don't have to admit that because I can understand the distinction between the state of Oregon as the governing body of the state and the state of Oregon as the physical territory. Either way, it's an I imaginary mean, opinion. So what, about, so what about the distinction between the state of Oregon that is the plaintiff and the state of Oregon that is paying you? Oh, oh that's a deep, well, that's, that, oh, that goes to separation of powers. The state of oh, Oregon yeah. is paying you. <laughs> Me to, if you'll allow me to finish, <laughs> uh, the state of Oregon is prosecuting you is, is the executive branch. The state of Oregon is paying is the judicial branch. They are separate branches. Are they both? The, the hold Oregon, on. They are not. It, they, well, let's put it this way: the state of Oregon judicial branch has confidentiality rules that apply to them. So, for example, I'll give you a simple example. Uh, I have cases in which uh, it, it may or may not be helpful to a client to, uh, say, undergo a polygraph examination. Um, I required the request funding from Office of Public Service. No, I'm going to wait because what I'm trying to say is the existence of that request for the polygraph, the fact that the polygraph may or may not have occurred, is matters which the state of Oregon, in the form of the prosecutors, never even find out about. The confidentiality rules, they're separate funnels. They're, 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 there's a Chinese firewall. See, there's no, there's no communication between those, those entities. And so that's what I mean. So you could so you could try to, to suggest somehow because the, uh, the the state government funds the office of defense services by my funding, that therefore I would work for the prosecution. Some people do make that confusion. It's not it's not the case. Obvious the case to us. Because what what it sounds to me like, for example, if it were Walmart that was the plaintiff, it sounds to me as though the electronic section of Walmart is the plaintiff, and then the uh, home and garden section of Walmart is the one paying the person who is supposed to help. Me. No. So, okay, how is that? Different? Well, because first of all, there's no Chinese firewall between sections. There's no separation of powers within Walmart. How do we know? They could they could, they could institute policies. No, they could institute policies that say electronic section when they're doing this, they are not allowed to communicate with home and garden, but as far as I'm concerned, that is irrelevant, because they are both Walmart. Well, well okay, but it's, it's a false analogy. I don't know what you're talking Well, and because, because, I just said, because, because, I don't, because Walmart is not subject to constitutional separation of powers rules. It's an analogy, sir. It's an analogy. You're missing the spirit of it to nitpick the details that don't matter. Those details aren't relevant. It's the analogy. It's not properly. I said because it's a false analogy. And in what way? So you're saying that a 250-year-old document, a religious artifact, is the only difference that is making the change between analogies? That's your authority. That's the authority. I'm one of the, the other. I'm not communicating. Then is that because of the existence of a 250 year old religious artifact? It's called the called true. religious artifact. And what is it? It's a it's it's a social compact. Is it a, does it align with all the rules of contract? I mean, I don't know why you're asking. Is it signed? Well, is it I, is it signed? Is it sealed? Is it delivered? Is there any consent? You know exactly what he's talking about. Yes. It was ratified by the states. That's what you mean. Well, if, if that's what I meant, that's what I would have said. So obviously that's not what I meant. But you can try and dodge it if you want. The, the, the rules of private contract don't have anything to do with the rules of social compact, except to the extent that the, uh, 
uh, the, that they, they choose to adopt them. So there's a, uh, uh, there, the Constitution has been ratified. If you want to suggest that the Constitution is somehow invalid or not, that that do you want to suggest far. that getting it ratified by a bunch of elite white slave owners over 200 years ago somehow means it applies to put me in a cage and fine me of these U.S. dollars here today in 2016? We understand that's your religion. Good luck with that going forward. Just keep sticking to that, sir. It's going to serve you well. Keep going. Actually, no. Actually, not in this case. The only person that is subjects to those penalties is Robbie. We're talking about you defining law and going to the Constitution. Robbie didn't have anything no, to do no, with that. I know. No, I know. I'm not. I'm not inclined to to uh, to try to define law. But you'll use the word against him in justifying threats of violence against him. You're a, you're a deacon in their church obeying the Pope. We know what's going on. This is just circular. You're not exhibiting a good faith effort of anything. You're just defending the state. Some criminal defense attorney. What criminal defense attorney defends the state and its impositions upon people without evidence of the ability to do so? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. What are you reading? This is Black's Law Dictionary's definition of law. Law, that which is laid down, ordained, or established. A rule or method according to which phenomena or actions coexist or follow each other. Law, in its generic sense, is a body of rules of action or conduct prescribed by controlling authority and having binding <laughs> legal force. That which must be obeyed and followed by citizens subject to Jesus sanctions Christ. or legal consequences. Do is you... a law. Law is a solemn expression of the will of the supreme power of the state. In old English jurisprudence, law is used to signify an oath or the privilege of being sworn, as in the phrases to wage one's law or to lose one's law, as in old English. Not the law. Sir, you're the citing... Also, you're, the term is also used in opposition to fact. Thus, questions of law are to be decided by the court, while it is the province of the jury to resolve questions of fact. The word may mean or embrace... Uh, may mean or embrace body of principles, standards and rules promulgated by government, statute or enactment of legislative body, administrative agency rules and regulations, judicial decisions, judgments or decrees, municipal ordinances, science or system of principles or rules of human conduct. And more and more opinions from the 1800s. Do you think we're playing this game challenging very pe powerful people without knowing where Black's Law Dictionary came from exactly and why it was created? Are you really citing that as some kind of authority as to a definition that we're supposed to, you know, give respect to? Black's Law Dictionary is what confuses and manipulates, and it was designed to do that, all of the masses of the people who don't know this little magical system you have law so that they could be imposed upon and stolen from and imprisoned in enslavement-like conditions. And you cite the Black's Law Dictionary in this phone call for something that Robbie should take as advice? It was not my choice to have this phone call, sir. I am, I am doing that. Uh, it's not about the phone call. You went to there to define law. Stop avoiding the issue on the table. You went there to define law as an authority. I factual. That is not a factual definition of law. What does that mean? What, there's not to say it's a factual definition. So definitions are not facts. How about definitions international maxims of law definition. over thousands of years? Definition. Black's Law Dictionary has definition. nothing to do with anything outside of this country. Definition, I'm sorry. Definitions are descriptions of meaning. Uh, meanings uh, uh, have various degrees of precision. Some things are more precise than other things. Okay, so for example, the definition of hydrogen chloride. Mm, this is, is lawyering to the best. And then say the definition of love. Okay, so so you see that definitions range in their in their in their precision based upon the sort of thing we're talking about. Okay. So I would like a definition that is not written for the purpose of the game that is being played, and I would like to say, well, all I can provide you are the definitions that are that are that, that are excellent. We have we have definitions from legal dictionaries. We have definitions from non-legal dictionaries. Again, just brought the factual evidence that the Criminal Code of Oregon applies to me, and uh, this can all get resolved very easily if you show factual evidence. Well, actually, it's going to be resolved whether or not you recognize. Oh, here comes some intimidation. Oh, Ooh, they're going to win, Robbie. That's a threat of intimidation. Oh, scare us. Please scare us, Mr. Scary Lawyer from Harvard. Well, whatever. You can tell the prosecution... By that which must be obeyed and followed by citizens subject to sanctions or legal consequences. Okay, they won't. What evidence do you 
have that I am that thing called a citizen? Well, I don't know whether you're a citizen, but I know that this is there have. any factual evidence that I am a citizen? Do you think that non citizens are so there's a law in the state of Oregon? I have I don't know why people think that, that but another it's not distraction. Sure. Another so, meaningless well, distraction. I'll, I'll tell you I a first thought I'll tell you how you, you want to answer your question, how would you know? How would I know? What, what, how would you know that, that, that uh, non-citizens are subject to the law of the state of Oregon? That's not what I meant. Okay, well, Violent yeah. force. Violence. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. Violence. I asked, how would one know if they are a citizen, first off? Also, you just said, according to whatever definition that you read, that the law has to do with citizens having to follow laws. So I want to know what factual evidence is there that I am even a citizen. Well, first of all, don't forget, you know, you're getting uh, this Just answer the question uh, for definition. once. Just for one yeah. time, just <laughs> answer it. Definition, as I said, you know, definitions of, of terms uh, are more or less precise. Hang on, nature of the term. Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, contrast hydrogen chloride with as well. Say there is no factual no. evidence that the criminal code of Oregon applies. I'm saying there's no factual evidence required. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm not asking you. <laughs> Jesus. I'm saying there's factual evidence. The criminal code of Oregon applies to me, yes or no. Yes. Okay, is, well, yes. The evidence is, if, if there is practical yes. Okay, now right. I ask for factual evidence. Okay. So would you like to amend your answer, or would you like to stick with the yes? say that your, your question is, your question requires, your question is of, of, of the, have you stopped beating your wife, nature? No, it is not. It is. No, it is Here not. we go again. We can't use analogies. They don't make sense, but he can use them all day long. No, 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 it's just, it's, 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 it
through two courthouses and 10 months and 10 hearings and their obvious embarrassment, why don't the judges just say that? We don't have to. Sorry, push them through. Well, they don't have, okay, look. They don't have to present that has to accept. They have to present evidence of each and every element of the charge at the time of trial if the matter goes to trial. Is jurisdiction an element? And so jurisdiction, okay, so here, here, here's where jurisdiction is alleged. Oh, God, here it comes. Okay. Jurisdiction is alleged right here. It says state of Oregon, right? I don't know. Now, the, okay, what here, how that is, how I'm trying to get out of that, maybe if I don't want to explain. Okay. So, the said defendant, Robert Earl Estabrook, on or about February 28, 2016, in the county of Multnomah, State of Oregon, did unlawfully and intentionally refuse to obey a lawful order by a person known by defendant to be a peace officer, contrary to the statutes in such cases made, and provided and gets the dignity of the State of Oregon. So, now, are we so, talking about the legal fiction of the State of Oregon? There's so much in here that we'll talk about. Knowingly, intelligently is a lie. If you allow me, well... Now, let's not be insulted. I uh, said intent. I meant intent. Um, I meant intentionally, not intelligently. My mistake. Well, yeah, there you go. Anyway, uh, so uh, so it is true that the state, uh, in order to prosecute you, they have to prove each and every material element. Now, interestingly, it used to be until recently that they would have to prove that the acts took place within the county of Multnomah. That's called venue as opposed to, to jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is the state of Oregon aspect. Okay? So, it, and interestingly, and this, this is, and, and, and I would tend to agree with you that this is a, a true peculiarity. Uh, the the uh, uh, appellate courts have recently ruled that the state, uh, the prosecution, no longer has to prove venue. Okay, and I think that's bizarre, and, and most of my colleagues agree. However, uh, it is certainly true that the, that in order to subject you ultimately, I mean, I mean at the end, so you, may, you may challenge jurisdiction. Uh, but the, the the appropriate forum for the challenge to jurisdiction is, in fact, the trial court. See? You're saying, oh, you know, there's, there's, there's no proof of jurisdiction. Sir, well, we, no. So the evidence, no, I'm not quite. The evidence of jurisdiction would be the, a, the statement of some sworn individual, a police officer or whatever witness, right, who would say, you know, and they would ask, did this, did this occur within, did this occur within the... County of Multnomah and State of Oregon. Yes. Okay. Why did? Why won't the judge just say that? Back to the question. Why won't the judge just say because evidence of jurisdiction isn't required? Please answer that. That's where this was going. Please get back to it. Evidence of jurisdiction would be provided at trial. I asked you why won't the judge say that? Why won't the judge say that? Well, maybe that maybe they just think it's a stupid question, or maybe they haven't you know really thought it out. I mean, I could certainly through ten hearings. Ten hearings and like five judges in ten months. They just maybe just didn't think it out. Let me ask you this. Okay, no, no, you. we're not switching. Know, this is this still is. on the table until it's resolved, sir. That's how civil discourse works. I'm, I'm trying. Okay, well, let's suppose that that occurs. Let's suppose you go back to court and the judge simply says, "Well, because uh, they're not going to call you Robbie. They're going to say, well, Mr. Estabrook.' Well, uh, they're, they're not going to do I have to refer to somebody using my incorrect name? Well, it's well, whatever." I'm asking you because I want to ensure my safety and I don't want to be yelled at and threatened by people anymore. Well, well, okay, well, if they call you Mr. Eastbrook, obviously you just said that. Again, I am asking you what obligation do I have to respond to somebody who is using my incorrect name? What, Mr. Eastbrook? Yeah. Well, do you have identification? Right. No, I'm asking this. Yeah, trying to paint you as a crazy person. Just another what, BS what tactic. My car, driver's license or state issued ID. I have several things. Right. I, I don't, they, don't, they don't all just say Robbie. They're state I, issued. Uh, they're our opponent I, issued. Minor detail. Oh, yeah. Oops. Forgot that part. What about, what about ones that aren't issued by the state? I mean, like a you know, rewards card. Again, that's voluntary. Play. If I want to go to college and give them that's a name for them to put on an ID I so they can track me, it. that's their prerogative. So let me finish here. Uh, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, when you get mail at, at, at home, you know, whatever, I, my guess is it probably has, probably has yes, whatever you will. Well, no, but I'm, yeah, and I probably want probably one. When you, if, you, if you live somewhere and you signed a, a rental contract, you didn't just write Robbie. Well, I'm, and the landlord didn't just write Robbie. My guess is it says, oh, it's, it's, your it's, your it's your name. It's your name. It's your name. Yeah. You are making an and I'm right too. No, do we get to choose our name? Or do you get to? I'm not. Rental agreement. 
and it doesn't have those named asterisks. Of course not, because that is not my name. Yes, I'm not. I'm not. Your name was given. I'm not disclosing my personal details of voluntary agreements that I have. I, I don't have to do that. I'm asking you. Uh, I'm asking you what obligation do I have to respond to somebody who is using an incorrect name? Well, don't respond to that. What do you mean? Don't respond. Don't, don't try that again. Yeah, I'll vote for you. Or are you trying to uh, dodge? That's his so advice. See how it goes for you. Are you trying to endanger my life? No, I'm not. You've just given me advice which would endanger my life. We have evidence for that, too. Be careful where you tread. This is bigger than you think. Otherwise, why would they put Harvard 20 years of experience on something that's pled down to eight hours of community service? Uh, I already told you because I happen to be the pickup attorney that day. Um, well, I'm sure. We're just going to believe that one. Well, well it's true. Well, you know, you can well, then either you're not what you say your credentials are or you're just not very good at what you do because people who went to Harvard in 20 years of experience don't spend time on people like Robbie for these charges. Sorry. So, well, there's where you're wrong, you know, there's, there's your assumption, there's where your assumption is wrong, and you, you know, I will grant you that most of my clients... I'm wrong that you're not a very good lawyer? That's not up for you to determine. That's for your clients to determine, and based on this visit so far, you're telling him to just go with it and hope for the best. Good advice. I didn't say the kind. I just said if you, if you really doubt the court's authority to call you by your, by your surname... I doubt the court's authority to rule my body. This is my flesh and blood. I determine what my name is, not the court. Period. Get used to that concept. Well, I don't even know if I'm a defendant here. You're, you're, you're the name defendant. Okay, what well, your name is on the... It means that your name is on the charge. You got it or not. Robert Earl Webster, that is not my name. Well, it was when you were born. No, it wasn't. I guarantee it. No, it wasn't. How okay. do you have it? You guarantee something like that. And what choice did he have in that matter? His parents gave it to him. That's going to impose upon him. Your logic is flawed to the nth degree, and you know it. It's not working. If you want to do us a favor, go to the prosecutor and tell him that this kind of treatment is just going to continue and continue online to embarrass every single last one of them. It's going to make their full real names searchable on YouTube forever for their kids, their parents, and their siblings. They can dismiss this case and this will all go away, or they can keep going on and on and get more of the same. But you're getting a tiny picture of what's to come. I'm on the phone with somebody now. Hold on. So I just want to clarify that you are telling me that if I am referred to by a name that is not my own, that I should not, I should go ahead and not respond to it and see what happens. No, no, I don't, I don't think you should. What I think, so you, what, is, what I think you should do is if in fact the court refers you to, to to you by something that is not your true legal name. No, I'm not asking about like quote unquote true legal name. Like they are required to refer you okay. again. You're talking about opinions, and I'm talking about facts. No, so I want to know what obligation do I have to respond to somebody who calls me by the incorrect name? That's all I want to know. Okay. So, well, and I and let me answer the question. That's the man. First of all, it depends on who it is, right? In other words, in other words, you are under no obligation if someone uh, on the street. You know, or someone else. Okay, well, you know, we're not talking about that situation. Okay, we're, we're talking about what obligations do you have to respond to a judge by a person calling themselves a judge oh, by calling me a name that is not my own and it's not your own based on what? Okay, if I call you George and say, "Hey, George, this is your name, and this is what we are deciding your name is." And now I'm going to hold a gun to your head and tell you what you have to do now, George. Well, actually, no, but you know, you know, you step all of that. I would be able to pull out my birth certificate. I have my legal name on. And oh, I'm sorry, I don't recognize that. I, I'm sorry, but no, according to our documents, you're just George. Yeah, okay. Okay. Wait, but here's the problem. You can't pull out a, a birth certificate that says you're not Robert Earl Webster. Uh, again. Why can you? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. What that, that big document is that uh, establishes your natural birth and your legal name. What, is, what does a uh, so-called birth certificate have anything to do with me? It, it has to do with you because you, like everybody else, get a name at birth. Okay. So you get a name at birth. Right. To impose. Saying that every, every, everyone, quote, everyone else, you just get like a you name at birth, birth. birth. And that is everyone. I don't know about other countries. 
in the United States. Okay, no, I'm talking about in fact. I'm talking about in fact in any, every individual born in the United States. Okay, because I don't you know what they do in Swami. Okay, and my name given to me was Robbie. Okay, so your, your legal name is Robbie. Uh, again, I don't know what a legal name is. You know, I, I'm trying to tell you what it is. Okay, well, we legal, and again, I don't care what the legal opinions are. Okay, you, All I'm asking is what obligation do I have to respond to somebody that, somebody that is calling me by a name that is not my own? I'm fine. Okay, well, first of all, first of all, you're operating under the premise that that's not the Who knows that's best what our name is, name. us or you? That is not my name. Okay. You're operating under the premise that that's not the of course it's not. So you like George isn't your name. Well, no, but I can prove that it is my name. Prove that Robert Earl has put it. I don't have to prove it. Yes, you do. No, my name is Robert. Transfer the burden of proof. No, you can, though. The point is, I can prove what my legal name is. Good I'm for you. I'm not talking about legal. I'm not talking about the name. The court is talking about legal. Okay, so okay. why is the court is true? What, what authority, what is factual evidence that the court has the authority to impose this so-called legal name upon me to party with her. By whom? Your parents. Okay. So we're to be imposed upon by what they say. Nice. I suppose I can buy more copy of your birth certificate. Or you see, here's the problem. If you're the one claiming that that's not your name, the burden is on you to prove this to you. Uh, no, because I'm not the one that is being held against. I, I'm the one being held against my will. I'm not the one forcing you into playing a game. I'm not the one holding a gun to your head and putting your liberty on the line. So again, you have the burden of proof. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you can establish that you're not Robert Earl Westerberg, great. Otherwise, you're Robert Earl Westerberg. Obviously, I am only Robert. So it's not obvious to anyone. Well, it is. Every person in this country, in this country, not country, the United States of America. Okay, and when you're the only person in the United States of America exists. Okay, look, now we have, we, we have ranged off into the realm of delusion. No, we have not. I'm asking you for factual evidence again. Again, if anybody here is delusional, it is you, because you are relying upon opinion to say that the United States of America exists. And I'm asking you for factual evidence. Keep in mind, I am asking you to provide factual evidence that the United States of America exists. Right? If it was so easy to prove in fact, then you would just simply do it. And if I were the delusional one, then you would obviously have evidence. But do you have as a factual evidence that the United States of America exists? Yes or no? You're, yeah. yeah. It's called yes. The United States okay. Okay. Obviously, okay. what is the factual evidence? I, I, I have a passport. Factual evidence. What is it? What's the factual evidence? Uh -huh. I, I, okay, okay, this is crazy talk. No, it's not. Yes, I'm it is. You for factual evidence. You know, you're always going to this. I'm not going to find out. Factual evidence. Yes. You have to really have to prove the existence of something. So He's I'm taking that it. out. Yes. That's a week out, I'm and just, he took it. That's just, no, it's just, I'm not, I'm not playing this stupid game. We're, we're not in a stupid game. I'm not getting it for factual evidence. I'm going to get two hours. And, and, well, I apologize. I was waiting for you for like an hour. Okay, and I have relevant clarification. You're paid by the hour. You specifically told me that we would not be rushed. We're not rushed. We're, like, we're not getting anywhere. We are getting and I do have to get something. Well, so or be self paid for it. No, you won't. Yeah, no, I've got my own food here. Probably eat it up and eat it. It's, it's, we're done. Go ahead and eat it up. Uh, I will. Yeah. Uh, we're done. So, I'm not going to attempt to prove the existence of the United States. Okay. We would have been just simply proved with factual evidence that those. ORS statute things apply to me, please. Show me the evidence since it is your currently your duty to inform me of the cause and nature of the previous no. I just want to yes or no. Is there factual evidence that the criminal code of Oregon applies to me? Just they just say yes or no is all I have to Factual evidence the criminal code applies to you is observable. Okay. Because they have guns. The guns are the fact. The police. Oh, call it, yeah, call it, call, it the, call it the coercive power of the state. Call it what you will, okay? We want to know what you call it, not what we call it. I call it the, I call it the jurisdiction of the state of Oregon or the in personam jurisdiction of the state of Oregon over persons residing or, or okay. present within. The so the jurisdiction of the party that's named as the plaintiff in this ordeal is what you're relying upon. 
Call it what you will, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not calling it that. They're calling it that. It's their paper, their orders. They put State of Oregon versus Robbie. You just relied on the authority of the opponent, and you're a best criminal defense attorney with a lot of experience. That's terrifying. Well, I'm sorry you see it that way. I just want to clarify, for my own understanding, you are saying that because there is a gang of thugs with guns that are forcing me to follow the rules that they wrote down in some book, that that is the factual evidence that the criminal code of Oregon applies against you. Well, is that your... Not exactly. Not exactly. Where I am off. But yet because, because this particular gang of thugs, if you will, has the uh, implicit consent of the people. Okay, and can you explain to me how they acquired this implicit consent of the people and who the people are? Uh, originally, they, they did so. I would like to know who the people are right now and how they have the implicit consent of these people right now. Okay, well, am I one of them? You vote, you are. Okay. Uh, am voting, I one of them? oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. You know, Regina, you're not a law unto yourself. Am I a part of the so-called people? Or yes, or a very small part. Yes or no? Am I a part of the people? A very small part. Am I the people? You're not. No, you're not the people. Okay. The people then, is a collaborative body. It's not an individual. Am I a part of the people? One part. So you're saying yes? One portion. It a yes or no? It, it, am I a part of the people? Yes or no? And the answer is a very small Okay, so it sounds like a yes. Well, okay, so is that a yes? not an unqualified yes? Fine. It's a yes with an explanation, a very small part. It's still a yes. So it's a collective, it's not one individual. You can't even... You are a person. You are not the people. Yes, the answer is no. Am I a part? So I'm not a person. You're a person. Clarify. I deny that. no. It's not a part of the people. You are not the people. I am not a part of the pure one individual. Am I a part of the pure one? Yeah, I'm not. So what you want? So I am a part of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So where the hell are you going with that? Does that mean a lot of it apply to you? Because you're part of the people? Hold on. How about you let me write down what we just said? Yeah, well, what does it make? Kind of obvious. Well, okay. Now there's a good question. Yeah, because I failed to see the invisible things that you see. So you see invisible things. I see the things that actually manifest themselves in the universe. Okay? So you can make up your opinion as much as you would like, but I see what exists in fact. So you have said that I am a part of the people. Yeah. Okay. You're a right vote. And uh, again, <laughs> I failed to see the relative voting. Has so nothing to do with it. Where, that's, where the, that's where the authority of the government derives from. Borrowed so false it's authority. It's Unethical, it's illogical. It's voting has nothing to do with it. Let's keep voting off the table, please. Thank you. No, yeah, I get to decide. It's my table. It's, well, again, you're not the one whose liberty is at stake here. It's the, the table. The fact that not part of the criminal investigation. What do you mean? Who is going to these particular criminal investigations? No, now we're getting to the guns. It is men with guns. They got the authority to arrest you? Yeah, the men with guns. Who will enforce the crimes that you're committing? Yeah, I might be. If you choose to commit crimes, but to commit crimes. Well, I'm just trying my best to keep my patients in a, in a ludicrous and, and mad cap environment. Okay, we think it's ludicrous too, so stop saying that. We all know we think each other is ludicrous. Acknowledged. Move on. How is it ludicrous to ask for factual evidence? Factual evidence of the fact that the government has the authority to enforce its criminal laws is ludicrous. I am asking not that question. I am asking, is there factual evidence, yes or no, that the ORM that you are alleging applies to me? Is there factual evidence that those apply to me, to you, yes or no? To the, to the extent that you were arrested within the within the territorial borders of the state of Oregon at the Portland Airport, it looks like. So you're saying that the factual evidence that those statutes apply to me is the fact that a gang of armed people kidnapped me and threw me in a cell. 
Well, no, more specifically, it's the fact that that gang of orange people kidnapped you and threw you in a cell within the confines of the, of the borders of the state of Oregon. Uh, <laughs> so, in other words, in other words, had this occurred in Mexico City, and had this occurred in Mexico City airport, then no, then no, the, the, no, the state of Oregon wouldn't have any jurisdiction. Ludicrous. No, oh, no, he's talking about borders and being with aliens. Borders are open now. How are they at that? Because you can step over them and across them. Okay. I can, are, do they sit? They're pins. And can you sit? They exist pursuant to the fact that we agree they exist. Who agrees? You. Well, most people. Most. Uh, again, don't commit the logical fallacy of appealing to authority and tradition. I want to know. Merely authority is not an agreement. Again. <sighs> There's no consent. Between, you know, and, you, and your religion people, or all of you religious people, have this agreement, just like the Catholic Church has their ideas, the Mormon Church has their ideas, they can feel free to, pro- the Mormon Church can feel free to prosecute its members for whatever rules that the Mormons break in that church. But if the Mormon church tried to come to me and say, hey, looks like you had sex out of marriage, now we're going to punish you, I'm going to ask them, you know, what factual evidence do you have that your rule applies to me because I'm not even a member of the church. The difference between a religion and a government. Well, again, government was name only. And name only Wait, today. Every, irrespective of, yeah, everyone within the, within the jurisdiction of the government, which in this case is a physical okay. So is it everyone or is it everyone within the jurisdiction of the government? Everyone's equal. Okay. So, does are you saying that the criminal code of Oregon and the Oregon revised statutes, whatever you want to call them, are you saying that those apply to everyone? Everyone within the physical confines of the state of Oregon. And what actual evidence do you have that those rules apply to me just because I am physically located in some geographical area? The fact. Okay. So remember, we distinguish between fact and law. The law is. We tried to clarify what the law was, and you got angry at us for it. You're the one introducing the word, and we're trying to clarify what you mean. We're not going down this rabbit hole again, sir. You already went down this rabbit hole. We're not going to stand by and let you do it again. The law is the shining law. We already did that. Okay, so that is black law dictionary. That is a law of opinion. I'm asking for definitions are definition. Oh, that is Black's Law Dictionary. Those are legal opinions. Written by a fool and a... ...follows by a person subject to the sanctions or legal process. A person or citizen? A same person. Okay. And in here, the state of order, why is a person? Lawyer person, I need to if I could see you and hear you and talk to you and, 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 and ask a question and get an answer. Okay. However, however, a dog, is a person a physical human? Is the dog a person? Okay. So a corporation is a person. But whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, well, can you see a corporation? They're a person, but because the law says they're a person. Okay, so again. The law. Now, <laughs> first off, saying, you know that I'm a person because you can see me. Yes. So it's like you're saying that you can't see a corporation. Right. Yeah, that corporation is a person. So yeah. Would you please, there have been all, there are different standards of proof. But, Okay, so you're saying that one thing is a person and we can apply standards of proof for that person, but then another thing is also a person, same thing as that person, but we're not going to apply the standards of proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 again, exactly. so again, there is no factual evidence that I'm a person. Okay, we'll pretend you're not a person. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not ask, I'm not saying I'll pretend that I am not a person. I'm asking, do you have factual evidence that I am a person? What is it? My eyes. Okay. And if there is a corporation in here, can you see that with your eyes and ears? No, that's a different level of proof. That's a legal pitch. Okay, okay, so I don't know whether or not you are speaking to me as a person in the sense of a legal fiction, or if you're speaking to me as a person in the sense of a factual will. But if you're going to apply a definition, if you're going to apply a definition of law, stop. You're just making a fucking fool of yourself. No, I've been making a fool of myself by bothering with you all this time, but no. I'm still doing it. No, I'm asking you for factual evidence that you're a person. 
pretty damn silly, isn't it? No, it is not. The Fourteenth Amendment I mean, isn't I mean, silly. He's quitting. He's the one calling the shots here. Woo! Do you have factual evidence of these What police? The ones are going to throw you out if you don't get out. You're threatening me with violence. I'm happy to leave. No, you're threatening me with violence. That's a threat. No. You just threatened me. No, I'm happy to leave. Harvard, 20 years. Can't handle the heat. Robbie, go ahead. Dude, you were crushing it. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I just kind of got into it and couldn't stop. <laughs> you're a fucking fool. <laughs> oh, God, Robin, that was so much fun. <laughs>